Imagine having breakfast with your kids and then relaxing with the day's paper as you're whisked from Niagara Falls to Albany, arriving on time and refreshed. Rail is the connector that brings workers to jobs, students to schools, and families together. Rail delivers goods and takes tourists to the state's great attractions easily and cost-effectively, all while preserving the environment. As momentum for high-speed rail builds, New York State is completing a statewide analysis of a high-speed rail solution to make the connections between our cities faster, more frequent, and more reliable. In public hearings across the state, with the same information available online, residents will have the opportunity to review the analysis and share their ideas about moving people faster by rail along the 463-mile Empire Corridor from New York City to Albany to Niagara Falls. The New York State Department of Transportation and the Federal Railroad Administration have undertaken the single most important project affecting rail transportation in the state today. We are considering the best ways to improve rail service across the state by conducting an environmental review of the entire corridor. The High Speed Rail Empire Corridor Program is the opportunity of a lifetime, a chance to impact the future of mobility and drive economic growth across New York State. We're examining safety and the environment, social and economic benefits, air quality improvements, and reduced oil consumption, along with the cost of construction, operations, and maintenance. Doing it well requires expertise, hard work, and your ideas. Everyone has an opportunity to participate, and every voice counts as we move through two tiers of evaluation in the New York State High Speed Rail Environmental Review. The first step in this process, which we're in right now, is the Tier 1 Draft Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS. Stakeholders, including Amtrak, which operates passenger rail service along the Empire Corridor, CSX, the freight rail company that owns the rail corridor from Poughkeepsie to Niagara Falls, and residents across the state have contributed to a robust initial analysis of the feasibility of a high-speed rail network that would cut travel time, increase train frequency and reliability, create jobs, and stimulate the economy. Since the start of the process in October 2010, more than 300 people attended scoping meetings and 1,800 more participated online. More than 100 ideas were suggested, resulting in 10 possible alternatives the team has analyzed to determine if they met project goals. We looked at how each would impact the environment, economy, and cultural resources. We examined their ability to generate ridership and improve travel times. We considered opportunities, risks, and costs. We have eliminated five alternatives, three because they didn't significantly improve speed or service or reduce operational costs. Two very high-speed alternatives were eliminated because of their significant environmental impacts and high costs, which range from nearly $30 billion to $40 billion. Five remaining alternatives are being analyzed in depth. Let's take a look at the five feasible alternatives under consideration. The state and federal environmental review process requires that we examine what would happen under a no-build scenario. This provides a basis for comparison, but it's important to remember that no build does not mean nothing will happen. In this EIS, the no build is called the base alternative, and it includes eight system-wide projects already approved for construction or underway at a cost of $290 million. Projects include new and redeveloped train stations, high-level boarding platforms, plus miles of new track, signals, and track improvements, such as grade crossings, to enhance safety, security, and convenience. Some things won't change, like the current travel time of 9 hours 6 minutes from New York City to Niagara Falls, existing maximum authorized speeds, and trains being on time 83% of the time. Train frequency would also remain as it is now, with 13 trains per day traveling north and south, and 4 traveling east and west. Under the base alternative, annual ridership, now about 1.4 million passengers, would increase slightly to about 1.6 million in 2035. This alternative has the least impact on the environment of all the alternatives. Let's consider the four remaining feasible alternatives. 
We'll look at how each affects the Empire Corridor South, between Albany and New York City, and the Empire Corridor West, between Albany and Niagara Falls. The four build alternatives in this EIS all include projects that were previously identified by key railroad stakeholders for Empire Corridor South from Albany to New York City. These projects, at a total cost of $350 million, include station upgrades, new and reconfigured platforms, and additional track to increase reliability and on-time performance for vital Metro North commuter rail and high-speed passenger rail service. What differentiates the four alternatives are improvements on Empire Corridor West from Albany to Niagara Falls, where there is significant need to improve service levels and travel times. Let's start with Alternative 90A. At a cost of $1.66 billion, 90A improves travel time and increases maximum speeds, the number of trains, and ridership. This option includes the capital improvements in the base alternative, plus 20 more capacity and station improvement projects, as well as new train sets. Travel time would be 8 hours and 8 minutes from New York City to Niagara Falls, about 60 minutes less than it is now. Average speed would be 57 miles per hour, up from the current 51 miles per hour, with a maximum authorized speed of 90 miles per hour. There would be more trains. 16 would travel north and south, and 8 east and west. Annual ridership would increase to a projected 2.3 million by 2035. On-time performance also would increase to 92.4%, about 10% higher than what the base alternative offers. Passenger and freight rail would continue to share the track, and this alternative would have a relatively low environmental impact. Alternative 90B includes the 20 capital improvements in 90A, plus station improvements and 273 miles of new track dedicated only to passenger rail to accommodate higher train speeds. With average speeds of 61 miles per hour and a maximum authorized speed of 90 miles per hour, Travel time from New York City to Niagara Falls would be cut by nearly 90 minutes to 7 hours and 36 minutes, and on-time performance would increase to 95.4%. 17 trains would travel north and south daily, and 8 east and west. By 2035, annual ridership would reach 2.6 million. Alternative 90B would cost $5.58 billion. Alternative 110 includes nearly all of the features of 90B and an even longer dedicated passenger rail track for trains traveling up to 110 miles per hour. At a cost of $6.25 billion, travel time from New York City to Niagara Falls would drop to 7 hours and 22 minutes, a time savings of 1 hour and 44 minutes over the current travel time, and projected on-time performance would rise to 94.9%. Speeds would average 63 miles per hour, with a maximum authorized speed of 110 miles per hour. 17 trains would travel north and south and 8 east and west per day. Projected annual ridership would increase to 2.8 million by 2035. As both alternatives 90B and 110 maximize the use of the existing right-of-way, owned by Freight Railroad CSX, they would have a moderate environmental impact, with a greater impact in areas where new, segregated passenger rail would extend beyond the right-of-way. The hundreds of miles of new tracks would provide relief from future congestion delays and allow passenger trains to maintain a higher rate of speed while minimizing impact to freight rail service. Alternative 125 would cost $14.71 billion, with speeds averaging 77 miles per hour and a maximum authorized speed of 125 miles per hour. Travel time from New York City to Niagara Falls would be reduced by 2 hours and 51 minutes to 6 hours and 2 minutes, and 24 trains would travel north and south and 19 east and west each day. Alternative 125 includes an entirely new 247-mile corridor connecting Albany and Buffalo. It requires construction on an entirely separate right-of-way for passenger rail service, with sections of elevated tracks to bring passengers to stations or freight to customers and freight yards. The average speed of this express corridor is 108 miles per hour. New service would stop in Albany, Syracuse, Rochester, and Buffalo, 
with options to change to local trains. Service for Schenectady, Amsterdam, Rome, and Utica will benefit from three of the improvements delivered by Alternative 90A and all of the base alternative's projects. Projected on-time performance would be 96.4% along the new high-speed rail corridor and provide an increased percentage along the local corridor. Annual ridership would increase to 4.3 million by 2035. Alternative 125 has the greatest potential for environmental impact, affecting up to 3,000 acres of mostly undeveloped land. If selected for the next phase of analysis, future work will include location studies to minimize impact on property and the environment. The next step in this public process is to hear your ideas about these five feasible alternatives. Gaining your input is important to the project team and to decisions about high-speed rail in New York State. That's why we're making it easy to participate, either in person or online. Public hearings are taking place in six cities across the corridor, in Poughkeepsie, Albany, Utica, Syracuse, Rochester, and Buffalo. The same information will be available online. There are several ways to make sure your comments are recorded as part of the process. You can share them verbally or in writing at one of the six public hearings. You can submit them by mail or email, or you can use the public comment page on our website. The more people involved, the better the outcome. In fact, since this project got underway in 2010, the website has received over 17,000 unique hits and we've received more than 200 email comments. So join the process and share your ideas on the future of high-speed rail across the great state of New York.